And we are back live, ladies and gentlemen. Roger Stone's here with us in studio, but we're going to go to an important report first and uh, come back with uh, Roger Stone here in just a few minutes. I, I want to get into strategy in the 2018 election, and it uh, looks like the blue wave uh, is starting to uh, be the hype we knew it was, uh, where they just lost the special election there in Arizona. We'll also look at the Democrats' open calls, the AP and others, to have conservative speech criticizing mainstream media be called hate speech and banned. Where they can attack Trump, they can attack us, call us names, call us murderers, cockroaches, criminals, but we can't even say anything uh, back to them. So we're going to get to that, but I want to play a John Bowne report that ties into all this. Dead broke DNC gambles with big lawsuit against Roger Stone, not just against Roger Stone, uh, but also against Donald Trump that you know they filed last Friday. So Roger's here exclusively with us, riding shotgun right into the next hour. We have a lawyer joining us to discuss uh, the waterfront as well, but critical uh, news here straight ahead. But here is the important report, dead broke DNC gambles with bogus lawsuit. Taking on a status of sore loser never before seen in American politics, the Democrats have filed a lawsuit alleging that WikiLeaks, the Trump campaign, and Russia colluded to interfere in the 2016 presidential election, superseding Robert Mueller's Nothing Burger investigation. Although this lawsuit has Hillary Clinton revenge written all over it, Chief Potty Mouth and Chair of the Democratic National Committee Tom Perez acted as if he was unaware of former Democratic presidential candidate Hillary Clinton's influence. And Hillary Clinton uh, pushed you to do this? Was this, an, <laughs> was this something is she supportive? Tom, uh, you'll have to ask uh, Secretary. You don't know if she's the, supportive of this move or not? Uh, I, have, I have not consulted Hillary Clinton to ask her permission to file a complaint. The, the buck stops with Tom Perez. Heading into midterm elections, Perez also downplayed the amount of money it would take to win a lawsuit or whether it was filed in order to gamble for potential winnings to fund the candidates. I will ask you, how much money is this going to cost the DNC? How much money are you taking away from 2018 to focus on 2016 in Russia? Chuck, we can't afford not to do this because when you look ahead and you see what, what was done before and what they're trying to do again, our democracy is at stake. It's hard to win elections when you have interference in elections. We've been winning elections. We know how to walk and chew gum. We've got boots on the ground right now in Arizona. We have, an, we have a great candidate. She's an undeniable underdog. We're fighting there. We just won in, in uh, Wisconsin. You didn't answer. How much money is this We're, lawsuit we'll, going to take we, this year? It, I don't know. I don't know the uh, amount of money that it will take, but I'll tell you, it's hard to put a price tag on preserving democracy. And you know what? That's why I concluded that it would be irresponsible of me not to do this. The Week reported back in January that the DNC is dead broke. The Democratic Party is carrying more than $6 million in debt according to year-end filings, and has just $6.5 million in the bank. Do the math, and the party is working with just over $400,000 overall. Meanwhile, the Republicans are swimming in pools of money. The Republican National Committee had raised $132 million by the end of 2017, about twice as much as the DNC, and entered 2018 with almost $40 million to spare, with not a penny of debt. The lawsuit also relies on questionable evidence, most of it from the Mockingbird media. But a lot of it relies on things like news reports, including uh, a single sourced or anonymously sourced reports. So the challenge in this suit is going to be translating those essentially news reports into evidence that's going to be admissible in court. Now, what's relevant right now is not necessarily whether they can do that, but whether or not they can survive a motion to dismiss, whether or not they have a well-pleaded complaint on the face. Um, it does seem likely that this lawsuit at least some defendants, at least some claims, are likely to survive a motion to dismiss. This is most relevant because it means that they'll move on to the discovery phase. That might end up becoming a really, really powerful tool for the DNC to actually unearth new information. Careful what you ask for. Zero Hedge reports WikiLeaks will be countersuing, announcing over Twitter that they are seeking donations for a countersuit noting we've never lost a publishing case and discovery is going to be amazing fun. Zero Hedge also added, what's interesting is that of all the sources that DNC cites in their massive lawsuit, the steel dossier they paid for isn't one of them. Tom Perez is working like a man that owes the mob money, acting in total desperation, what has become the norm for the party he leads. John Bound reporting for Infowars.com. Now we're going to get Roger Stone's expert take on all this, but a big treat, you could say. 
I've gotten emails and texts saying, hey, Roger Stone worked for the Nexium sex cult, and why aren't you bringing it up? Well, because I talked to him about it a long time ago, 2007 for, what, two months. He worked for them because they had a bunch of businesses and companies, and he you know, lives in New York part of the time, and, uh, and then he can give you the big scoop on it. The Brothman daughters, the connections to the Clintons, all of this. And so that ties into the Democrats, but he, he was also hired as a consultant. I mean, Roger... Just briefly on this, back before you retired from lobbying, what, just four years ago, you had one of the biggest lobbying firms. I mean, some media said the biggest for a small shop, but, uh, I mean, yes, you've worked for th thousands of clients. Uh, there was a time when we had the dominant lobbying shop in Washington, D.C., Black Manafort and Stone, once Black Manafort, Stone, and Atwater. In this particular case, Alex, uh, State Senator Joe Bruno, who was the Senate Majority Leader, uh, introduced uh, me to the folks at Nexium. I met uh, I met the Bronfman sisters. Uh, I I audited this class, which was a bunch of middle aged housewives trying to learn kind of self esteem. Certainly didn't seem like any kind of a cult to me. Well, well hold on, because because you got on the rabbit hole. We'll talk about it next hour. Yep. I want to get into the attacks on free speech. I want to get into blue wave fizzles. Is that accurate? Tucker says, don't run against Hillary. Run against the openly racist extremist. We're going to talk to you as a political consultant on the other side about that. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. The Alex Jones Show. Because there is a war on for your mind. I remember when, I remember, I remember when I lost my mind. Well, Roger Stone won his big New York defamation case against him. Zero coverage when he won. When they uh, threw uh, and, and, and withdrew the suit in uh, Virginia on t Tuesday morning. Or Monday morning, excuse me. Zero coverage except here. And I'm told they might try to refile it, but once you've done that, it's really hard. They realize they just filed just pure BS. It was defamation. And But but again, it's this tactic where they're filing like screenplays now as lawsuits, and they just want the press from it, but they don't think they're going to pay. But we filed a lawsuit against them for it. No coverage of that. But the original plaintiffs are starting to go, oh, wait a minute. No, you're exactly right. It's all about the headline. It's it's not about a real case. It's not about evidence or proof or a, or a, or a responsible case. It's an abuse of the judicial process for the purposes of getting a, a negative headline on Alex Jones or on Roger Stone or on Infowars, and then they turn around. And they use the headline as the rationale for censoring you on the internet. It, it's an insidious plot. But uh, the Democratic National Committee lawsuit is a perfect example. This is a left-wing conspiracy theory. No evidence, no proof based on conjecture, supposition, projection. Uh, it's nonsense. It, it's a, it's in this case, it's a recycle of the lawsuit that the Obama crowd already has filed against me. And notice, right as, right as the, even the media goes, okay, Russia Gate's over. We're moving on to Michael Cohen and, and women in, in, in the whole dragnet. Boom, they refile all the old lies again like they filed on you and the president with Obama's law firm last year. And do they really think that the Russian state and the Russian army are going to show up in court for this? Or do they just throw their name into the lawsuit? But that's the, the point, headline? is they'll go, Russia didn't show up. Right. It's it's all about... Like if the Russians sued the U.S. So you sue people through the WTO, the IMF, the World Trade Organization. Now, no, let's stop. So we're getting to that next hour with a lawyer coming on to discuss it. Not one of our lawyers. We don't have our lawyers on to discuss cases. We discuss the generalities. Even my lawyers early on said, I wouldn't have this press conference in D.C. Their suit is the worst thing we've ever seen. It'll get thrown out before we get it to court. And, and, and they were right. So now I'm not giving out tactics on, on, on the other fake ones. I don't just say they're fake to act confident. If I've done something before that I think crosses the line, off record, I've settled a couple lawsuits when we've made a mistake. Okay, and I'm not going to say, obviously, which one that's off record. But, I mean, when they're just cuckoo land lies... I don't know what they're thinking, Roger. Well, two things. First of all, it's about bankrupting us. Uh, just the motion to dismiss these lawsuits, just the motion to dismiss can cost you $100,000. Yeah, exactly. It costs it cost, it cost a lot of money. A huge amount of money. 
And we've already spent, I don't want to give them, give them any, you know, happy times out there. That's why listeners need to understand. We really do have the best turmeric bodies. We really do have the best iodine. We really do have the best multivitamin uh, liquid formula uh, with the vitamin mineral fusion that's great for you and your children. We really do have the best air filters. We really do have the best storable food and a free water filter that's $200 value with three-month supply powered by My Patriot Supply, the name, in high-quality 25-year store. I mean, I barely plug one minute an hour because I'm so obsessed with the information, but it is critical to support our local AM and FM stations. It is critical uh, to become a local sponsor. It's critical to buy our products. It's critical. You know, R Roger Stone works for InfoWars. He also has Stone Cold Truth. He's got a new book coming out we're going to be showing. We need capital. We don't have George Soros. We don't have the big money. You know, uh, R Roger, you, you had one of the top lobbying firms in the country. Um, and why did you, that's a good question to ask for this other news. Why did you decide, what was it, six, seven years ago to stop lobbying? Because, Alex, I love politics, not government. I love the fight, winning a campaign, fighting for the things you believe in, taking on candidates or causes that you believe in. I'm not all that interested in the Third Amendment to the Treasury bill regarding the treatment of casino income and so on. It's just highly technical. Uh, so padding around the halls of Congress, asking congressmen and senators to do things for you, or it gets old. It was never my thing. It's more fun having you know fans come out and Antifa come out and attack you and be in the. You want to be in the arena and change the world, not just make money. I've written five books. Two of them are New York Times bestsellers. I have another one coming. Uh, this is the fight I've chosen. Now I can help candidates and causes I believe in, not because I need the money, but because uh, they're good men and women who believe in what we believe, who are prepared to take on the globalists, who are prepared to tell the truth about the two-party duopoly that's ruining this country. Now I want to slow down because I, I tend to speed up and we miss everything. I want to get in the blue wave. Is it really dead? I don't want to be too over-optimistic, but I think the numbers show it is, but they're stealing elections, so we got to watch out. I think Tucker's right and wrong. He says, don't run against Hillary. Well, she's still the deep state. Her apparatus is still in place. So I agree, don't run about her as the past, but run about how her people are still in there, and we're fighting deep state, see? Because they always lay out, oh, run against her because she's old and bad, or run against, you know, you know, the, you know the, no, don't no, run against all of it. Trump should be out doing more rallies so we can see leftists come out and riot and go crazy. That gives him up, you know, in the polls everywhere. So, I mean, I, I don't know who's giving him advice. It's so clear what needs to be done here. Meanwhile, FEC records document that Hillary Clinton campaign laundered $84 million to the foundation conservatively. Meanwhile, we're worried about did uh, Michael Cohen pay off some bimbos? I mean, as long as they're not beating the bimbos, and I'm a libertarian. I don't, you know, I'm not in the bimbo department. Uh, but, but, but my whole point is, is that uh, there's not even proof of that. But, you, oh, my God, it's not Russia. It's now bimbos. So let's start with this. FEC records, Infowars.com, show Clinton campaign laundered $84 million. It was right through the records, totally illegal. Use it in the campaign. It's all right there. But AP says it's okay. Ban criticizing mainline journalists. That's the new theme from Hillary, Acosta, the Associated Press. Very dangerous. Well, fortunately for us, Hillary refuses to ride off into the sunset. So it's not it's not up to us whether she is relevant. She's making herself relevant by hanging around. Professional Democrats I know are tearing out their hair over this. They just want the Clintons to leave. Barack Obama's uh, public positioning is far more favorable, but Hillary refuses to go. But he's still smart enough to keep his head down. Well, there's no question because what he knew and when he knew it regarding the Steele dossier and the illegal unconstitutional... We know he quarterbacks that. The president has all the NSA data now. Uh, I mean, we, we, we have them. It's the greatest violation of civil liberties in American political history. It's an outrageous crime for which somebody has to be punished. Uh, so he doesn't want people going around asking, what did the president know and when did he know it? Separately, it's all over the news, the communist infiltration by China. They basically run, in, in major Washington Post articles, surprisingly enough, even Bezos admits it, they run almost every public university. They're the number one funders, just like they're the number one owners of our debt, and they openly have pro-Mao and pro-Kill Falun Gong events that are the main chairs now at UT. I, I mean, I, I, I read this, I can't even believe it. I was told by CIA guys, Two years ago, the UT was run by the Chicoms, and, and and they wanted to do something about it, and now it's in the news. What I mean, what? And we're hearing about Russians.
I am so sick of that red herring. That's the diversion while we're getting taken over by the Chai Coms, people. There, there's no question. And, and we have helped them by giving them most favored trading nation uh, status, by, by bending over for them at every turn. That's the legacy of George H.W. Bush, by the way. Uh, the real danger today is Chinese communism, not the Soviet Union the former Soviet Union. I'm not saying that they're our friends, but we have a much more uh, aggressive adversary in the Chinese. Do we have a $900 billion deficit with uh, with uh, Russia? In fact, last time I heard, I think they have a trade deficit with us. I think that's correct. No, chi China is the, this is the big enchilada. Uh, and the president knows it. There's the irony. He He's totally got their number, uh, which is why he is cracking down with these tariffs. I don't think he loves tariffs. In fact, I know he doesn't like tariffs. He does like using them as a club to get them to the table. Well, when they've got all their internal tariffs to the tune of 900 billion, 500 billion in trade, 300 billion in intellectual property, that's conservative. I mean, they're more than half the global uh, trade deficit. And, and I want to get into this too with you, not to toot my horn, but remember election night, I got really concerned on there and I said, listen, the real war is going to start now. I'm glad we got Trump in, but they're going to counter offensive so hard. The real war is about to start. And I was just worried that listeners and people don't realize it's on. But I think they get it now. Well, also, you said at the time and since the Russian thing will fizzle out, you said. Then they're going to switch to sex. They're going to they're going to they're going to re up these claims of a bunch of bogus women that Trump assaulted them. Uh, and then uh, th then that died down. And you said, don't worry, it will be back. And here it is front and center. No, I think Well, they launched me too, just to try to get, get past Hillary and, and Hollywood to just make it about everybody. Right. Plus, and so, oh, it's just smoke screen you know, for the pedophilia, raping women, men, all of it. And you can see how they pre-program this. Plus, it was a way to try to take Weinstein, which was an enormous uh, bump in the road for them, and turn it back on us. Try to make it about... So let's look into the future again with Roger Stone. I'm Alex Jones, your host. On the other side of this quick break, Infowars.com, Newswars.com. His new book's about to come out. We'll tell you about that. But when we come back, we're going to get specifically into the blue wave. And you know, is it in trouble uh, with this Arizona race? And then we'll look beyond that. Stay with us. If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. Live from the Infowars.com studios, it's Alex Jones. Sitting here in the big shadow government command base, Austin, Texas, sitting on top of the big underground cities, the big secret nuclear reactors at UT, all of it. I'm not just talking about J.J. Pickle Center in North Austin. And Roger Stone's here. We were talking about letting the communist Chinese in, even as the Washington Post has to admit, that basically took over the UT government department, their research labs. And that ties into Trump saying $300 billion in intellectual property. That's just what we know in intellectual property and products in, in patents theft. What about all the secret stuff, the DARPA stuff? And that's just UT, the biggest university in the world. And you know, you know, besides MIT, one of the biggest science centers uh, in the country, Stanford's big as well. And it's, it's Chinese communist run, and that's in the news. We're hearing about Russians, Roger. Uh, and they manipulate our currency. Uh, and they play games uh, on trade. No, the Russians are the number one problem in the world. I'm not saying the Russians are not a problem, but we ought to be focused on the Chinese menace, it seems to me. But you were elaborating on that. I mean, Trump gets this. Uh, he's been he's been right about this for 15 years. He's been harping on the fact that they steal our patents, they steal our technology, they steal our jobs, they cheat in all their trade. Uh, that That's why I was glad to see him follow through on the tariffs, even though I philosophically agree that the tariffs are probably not that effective. They're effective at getting them to the table and bludgeoning them into better behavior. And that's, I think, the point of it. I do want to go back to your blue wave stuff because uh, I think the Democrats have counted their chickens way too early. Well, we know they it's hype, like saying Ted Cruz is in a dead heat. Ted Cruz is going to lose. That's pure push polling to create the perception so Republicans don't come out and Democrats want to come in for the victory. What are they running on? They have no plan 
to revitalize the economy. They have no plan to address the trade balance. They have no plan to fix the immigration problem. They have no pri- no plan to to make America safer or stronger. It's a one note platform. We hate Donald Trump. We want to remove Donald Trump. We hate Donald Trump. They have nothing else. Why are they so lazy? Like even their lawsuits against us are just haphazard like idiots wrote them. I mean, it, well, they, it's just the Democrats are really that dumb. Well, then how they ever get control? Well, the, the, the party has no soul and it has no core. It's a strung together group of special interest groups. It's a broken coalition strategy. It's a bunch of broken up groups, atomized. And they can't get rid of the face of their party. Nancy Pelosi, Hillary Clinton. These people are losers. If the Republicans run on peace and prosperity, job creation and prosperity, peace with North Korea and prosperity, we will win. They don't have anything to run on other than pure hatred for Donald Trump. And by the way, I know you've talked to the president and others. You've really pushed, like, he didn't even understand what Sessions was doing, killing him. And then when Trump comes out and says, decriminalize marijuana, let the states control it, which should be a gigantor win, something Obama didn't even do, zero coverage. I mean, like, one article. It should that be. is so seismic. Let's talk about that when we come back. You're absolutely right. I'm going to get into the whole um, Nexium cult, which you did some cons- limited for two month consulting for, which you never hid, which is not a thing. They're like, oh, Jones, you claim it. You're with Nexium now. Well, they have a lot of businesses, a lot of things. I've never worked with Nexium, <clears throat> but we're going to talk about that. I'm glad you're here. Happy you're to. more than happy to give us uh, from from a, a slight inside view. You were kind of in the doorway of the cult. Uh, what you saw. Yeah, I'm happy to get into that. I mean, they were introduced to me um, by a Republican state senator. They had hired uh, <coughs> Senator Gillibrand's father, Doug Rudnick, who is a well-known and respected Democratic lobbyist. I worked for them for about two months, and what I found out is they didn't need a lobbyist. They needed an attorney. They were upset about some former partner of theirs who had left, and they thought took intellectual property. And they, I said, you don't need a lobbyist. You need an attorney. You need to be in court, not in front of the legislature. They could never understand the difference between the state and federal levels of government. The whole thing. Oh, stay right there. Let's. I want to come back and kick this back off because it's a doorway. You were in the doorway to the doorway into the whole weird world of all the sex cults. We'll be right back. Waging war on corruption. It's Alex Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back live with Roger Stone. I'm Alex Jones with Infowars.com and Newswars.com. We are one of the number one most attacked groups in the country and the world because we're promoting Americanism, anti-globalism. We're promoting true free market. We're standing against radical Islam. I'm also against cancer, and I don't like death either. So just I like pragmatic, nice, happy things like freedom and the right to self-defense and, you know, men and women and families and all those things that are under attack by the globalists that want total control of civilization. So let's walk through three big issues. Looking at the Nexium cult uh, that you uh, did some consulting for before you found out what was going on back in 2007. So you're, and you're an expert. has been breaking this down on the war room. So my audience doesn't know that. So they've been saying, hey, ask Roger about Nexium because the Democrats are trying to recycle that and dig that up to attack you somehow. But Comey memo leak contact had special government employee status at FBI. CGE. Now, they're saying they only know of one other person that did that. That was somebody that worked for Uma Abedin. That's not true. This is an offshoot of InfraGuard in the Patriot Act that got over 3 million people we know of with special emergency governmental cards, the right to carry firearms in many cases, you name it. And it's the FBI and the deep state under Bush and the Clintons creating a private army, basically a private spy force. And now Columbia law professor... Uh, James Comey used as a go-between last year to leak the contents of sensitive memos to the media confirmed to Fox News on Tuesday that he previously worked as a special government employee, SGE, for Comey's FBI on an unpaid basis. And he says, I did indeed have SGE status with the Bureau for no pay, Richmond wrote in a email. Well, you go to the head of the line at the airport, you get access to all the secret documents, to the Office of Personnel Management, uh, when 
uh, this federal judge, you know, puts the whole database online for federal agents uh, of uh, Trump's lawyers' communications. He gets access to that. This is so they can use these go-betweens to go out and carry out operations in the media. So it's government and the Democrats' deep state leaking into media, leaking into academia. This is basically a spy operation. Now, people are freaking out over this. Fox News is reporting on But for me, the bigger story is Comey going, I never leaked to Congress. And then saying, okay, I... I gave it to a friend at the law school at Columbia Law so that the truth would get out. But then he tries to say, but I didn't leak it. He's an FBI head. He should know the guy that gives the order to somebody else to give it out, admits he did it to get it out, then saying, but I had somebody else do it, makes it even more of a capital offense that it's premeditated. I mean, these sophists, these frauds, most of these lawyers, I know more than they do. I've had top lawyers admit that. Uh, judges, I mean, I'm not bragging. These people are lazy. Do I know more about Comey than he does about the law? And here's why. I'm not just saying Comey thinks you're dumb. Maybe he's not stupid. Roger, why would they illegally surveil you, the president, lie about it, do all this, then tell people they had surveilled, they had all the dirt, then say, oh, we didn't surveil, but there was dirt, then say they didn't leak, but admit it before they leaked, and then now saying, well, I did leak, I thought you should have it, but I did it through somebody else, so I didn't violate the National Security Act. I mean, it, it, it's like the guy's shot full of holes. They're so guilty, struck all of them, the dossier, cooking it up. This is, these people have self-immolated in front of us. The only question is, does Jeff Sessions have the Wavos or Trump or anybody? It's not even Wavos. They're coming for Trump. They're coming for all of us, and they're the globalists. So they're coming. They're bad that we've caught them. Give them hell. Why aren't people ready to give it to them? The answer, Alex, is hubris. They were so confident that Hillary would win, that all of their crimes would therefore be able to be covered up. So therefore, they blatantly used government email, government text messages, talking about their their insurance policy against Donald Trump's election because they were arrogant. And now they think they can lie their way out of it. This special government status that you mentioned is very interesting because it is under that that Huma Abedin is able to triple dip. She's able to get paid by the State Department, the Clinton Foundation, and a lobbying firm that lobbies the State Department, Teneo, the only person in American history who's ever been allowed to do this, Hillary's friend. Well, here's the big secret. They're telling everybody this. The secret is for good little globalists, they can quadruple dip, and it's done under InfraGuard. Yeah, so you're essentially you're allowed to break the law. Uh, it gives you a special status, so you're above the law. And by the way, he said, oh, yes, I have that status. We've created new royalty. Well, and did Comey tell him to give it to the New York Times specifically? I believe that is the case. I think when you go back to his testimony, he admits that. So, it's And by the way, way, there's some good things about InfraGuard, where if you've been, uh, uh, say, a Marine for seven years and then the CIA leading operations for ten, and then you're working for high-level governmental operations that interface with private corporations... I just like want reciprocal for cops to have guns nationwide. We can trust them. The Democrats are fighting that. We've almost got it. There are people in InfraGuard who have connections. I'm not going to get into it. Who can carry guns around the country. I'm all for that. Just don't let them have database connection. Don't let them be above the law. And then don't have university professors that have full clearance into the FBI database. No, I'm not for that. Does that make sense? It does. I think at the end of the day, Comey's book tour, his entire launch is going to turn out to be one of the greatest public relations, legal, and political mistakes of all time. I agree, because he's just, con he's just, he's, 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 con he's sitting there and changing his story and now showing he committed perjury in Congress. Well, and when he was in New York last week, we had, you know, three dozen info warriors outside with Laura Loomer. Uh, I think she embarrassed him. Uh, we're going to continue to do this at every level. Oh, I forgot that. Will you guys cue up Laura Loomer confronting Comey? I want to play that again. Go ahead. Uh, but we, we're going to be summonsing, uh, I think the next one is May 2nd in Miami. Info Warriors will be there to join us in a peaceful protest to expose James Comey's lies. Help us greet Lion Jim Comey, as we call him. And my thanks to the many Info Warriors who showed up in New York. It was in pay for the last two months. We're going to talk about that, but just briefly, I got told by... And people say, oh, yeah, right. Well, people people know, yeah, we have the sources. I mean, look at Roger Stone, right? You don't think he has sources? I got told by high-level individuals in multiple federal agencies 
that the Democrats are getting ready to stage false flags against their media, against the U.N., against the Federal Reserve, against what's seen as the establishment, against universities, to then say Alex Jones and Trump caused it. Now you see, days later, Acosta, AP, Hillary, and a bunch of other groups, those clips are coming up, they're on Infowars.com, saying Trump's going to cause terror attacks, he's going to get us killed, we need to ban criticizing mainstream media. That's AP. Make it a hate crime. Roger, how transparent is their preparing? It wasn't hard for me to predict they were going to launch Me Too movement to reboot going after Trump and to cover up from, you know, for Hillary. It, it, it's a fact. But I can see this, but I've been told by folks in the government that when ISIS then came out this week with the image of them machine gunning CNN, you know, the New York Times and all this, that that's the preparation. They are getting ready, buddy. What do we do? They're getting ready to bomb their own facilities and blame it on us. Well, how do we? And then, they, and then we come out and say, "Don't blame us." They're going to say, "Oh, how dare you? You know, you know, deny that you know we, that somebody else did this." This entire hysteria on their part is born of the fact that we've got three percent economic growth. The president is on the verge of a peace deal with the North Koreans. Best GDP in decades. They are apoplectic that he is being this successful. So now we have and how great he and Melania look out there. Well, it's in the fact that he seems to be handling this Frenchman pretty uh, adeptly, uh, and he's on the verge of uh, of denuclearizing the North Koreans. They're out of their minds with rage, and that's why they're going to go to these tactics. But again, Alex, the overall strategy is what censorship. It's all about censorship. Silence Alex Jones. Silence Infowars. Silence Roger Stone. Silence the Daily Caller. Silence Breitbart. Silence anybody who's alternative. So they can then take away our guns and bring down a duly elected president. I mean, I have the articles right here, stacks of them, where it says, silence Alex Jones. Where's that particular article? It says, Alex Jones doesn't deserve the First Amendment, uh, is the headline. And this is in major publications. And they call me a cockroach and a rat and a criminal and all this crap. They've got their speech to make stuff up. I don't even have speech to sit there and respond. That's what we're talking about. All right, Roger Stone and his view from being somewhat on the periphery of the Nexium sex cult that's tied to Hillary straight ahead. If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. Live. From the InfoWars.com studios, it's Alex Jones. Now, Roger Stone. Uh, I knew, I, I remember asking you about this like a year ago when this was first breaking. Because I knew you lobbied for thousands of groups. The Nexium sex cult. Describe in your own words what it really was, your periphery view, working for him for a few months, why you got out of it, obviously not knowing it was a cult then, and now you've got inside a secretive group where women are branded. That is out of the New York Times. Uh, Smallville actress Allison Mack is both a victim and perpetrator of cult sex crimes, whistleblower says. Allison Mack, Smithville actress, granted bail in the sex cult case. And Hillary's been tied to it now. Who is Keith Rainier? Five details. We'll go over this, but... Your view is very interesting, and this was mainly a leftist group, which, again, women can't find conservatives to pimp them, to beat them, to hurt them. Not all women want that, but some women do. They found it with Nexium, but you describe what it was like. They were shriveled women, like having their souls sucked. Describe what you witnessed. Well, first of all, they presented themselves to me as a self-help group, having these classes in the Albany, New York area. Uh, their clientele all appeared to be wealthier, middle-aged, mostly housewives, but some men as well. People looking for some self-esteem, people looking for some self-confidence. But the people who worked for Nexium, the women who worked for them, were all emaciated. They were all extremely thin. And I did audit this course to see what it was like, to, to look in on it. I noticed that they were given no bathroom breaks. They were given no food breaks. It was extremely intense. I met the actress Catherine Oxenberg there, who briefly audited and then fell out with the cult, now struggling to get her daughter, India, out of it. Uh, I'm in touch with her. Last week on The War Room, we had Frank Parlato, who really is the crusading journalist who has busted this cult 
wide open. Uh, and I and I love how you've been exposing it and talking about your experiences since it came out in the news, and then the media spins it like you're involved. Well, I, you're exposing it, and then you're a bad guy. I never saw any evidence of a harem. I never saw any evidence of sexual abuse. I never saw any evidence of women. Well, you were, you, you, I mean, you were on the porch. You were on the outside. Uh, because it was clear after two months that they needed an attorney, not a lobbyist. Their, their specific complaint had to do with an ex-partner who they believe had built them and stolen. Sure, but you told me but basically, off, not off record, but not on air, you just said basically it was a bunch of crazy people. Well, and what they did do, and this was clear, was they would find wealthy offspring like Claire and Sarah Bronfman of the very wealthy Bronfman fee family in New York, and then they would suck money from them. Uh, they're embroiled in many lawsuits. So it's sucking money off liberal women, and I guess liberal women don't like men that they've been trained to and don't like men that are nice to them, so I guess that's the ultimate fetish is being cucked. So these women, a lot of them went in to be abused. It's just, it's, it's totally sick. Uh, so it was very clear that the Bronfman sisters were writing enormous checks, drained down their inheritance, uh, to pay for this, the famous Keith Ranieri, I never met. Everybody spoke of him in these reverential terms, uh, but all I saw was this self-help program that seemed pretty pathetic, to be honest. By the way, these self-help programs, I got to tell you, folks, we don't have big meetings. We don't do big groups. We don't tell you how to live your whole life. We just break down facts here. So many of them are cults. They've got these exercise cults and these other things, and it's all like some weirdo just stating stupid basic things everyone everyone just deciding they found the truth so they can feel really big and smart and it's like mainstream media it's like the democratic party it's like any of it it's not it's i mean pull up the leader of the nexium cult i mean this guy this guy looks like a complete moron i mean just look at every one of these self-help guys has that same stupid vapid moron look in their eye and then other morons go to them believing they're going to get some moron valhalla out of it well, and they're extremely litigious as well. I think you'd find that in most cases, anyone who works for them, even briefly, ends up getting sued. They never sued me, I'm happy to say, but they sued many others. Uh, Doug Rutnick, who's a well-known and respected Democratic lobbyist, who happens to be the father of Senator Gillibrand, worked for them. I have no evidence that he did anything wrong either. They ended up suing him, I think, falsely. He probably figured out the same thing I did. They didn't need a lobbyist. They needed a lawyer. I'll tell you what it sounds like to me. You get people a little bit of power. They get people that want to be around power, so they set themselves up like their power. People then agree it's the power, and then they go crazy. I can tell you how many times. It's like the lottery effect. 98% of people, this has been documented, been films made, books written, that win the lottery, end up homeless, in jail, or totally broke, or dead within two years. But they were targeting the wealthy children of wealthy parents. That's where the big money was coming from. The Bronfmans and others. Uh, emptying out their inheritance, turning over all the money. To and think of the couple. psychology. You've gotten these coddled, spoiled girls, mainly. And, and then finally, there's somebody, you're great, you're going to get it, but teaching them they've got to debase themselves. There's a thrill to that. Uh, that's why women go and get pimps. Well, and they, Very sick. And they, they want to belong. They really just desperately want to belong to something. Uh, and therefore, their bank accounts get vacuumed out. Uh, uh, Edgar Bronfman Jr., the, the father, uh, essentially ended up taking legal action against the cult because they, they lifted $30 million. This is not small change. They, uh, absolutely. I mean, I mean, you get around the rich and powerful, they're like, most of them are mentally ill. And their kids are all ruined. And, and then they've just got these weird trendy cults around them, sucking them dry, when common sense and free market and Americana is the only thing these people need. They need 700 horsepower vehicles. They need to go out and climb a mountain. They need to have fun. They need to be to go shoot guns. That's where they're going to find it. Clean, pure drinking water.